I want to start with the ceasefire. Um, every time the Palestinian factions ask for a ceasefire, uh, they do so from a point of weakness. Why does the government agree uh, to the ceasefire? The ceasefire is between Israel and the Palestinian Authority in the Gaza Strip. But the person who spoke to the Prime Minister, the only person that the Prime Minister is willing to negotiate and to talk with, to have a dialogue with, is with Abu Mazen. When Mahmoud Abbas phoned the Prime Minister, he called and he said, all of the Palestinian factions have agreed to the ceasefire. We don't think of this as a perfect ceasefire, but we're willing to give it a chance. If the moderates see that it's worthwhile, and worthwhile at the end for the Palestinians is that they have quiet. Quiet and stability is something which is good both to Israel and to the Palestinians. Even, even if they're using that quiet to smuggle in, as we're hearing in Knesset security committees, to smuggle in longer range missiles which can now reach Ashkelon. And even if they're using that quiet to gain more time and to regroup and construct command and control centers in Gaza. First of all, nobody said that it's a perfect ceasefire. We have to put it within the context of where we live. Let's see where the Palestinian voices are who say, we want the quiet. Stop firing the rockets out of our areas. We don't want the military of Israel to be back here because of the rockets. I'll put it in these terms. We're strong enough to allow ourselves to be for a change. And I say for a change, we can actually be restrained because we're strong enough to start tomorrow morning to retaliate, to go after them. Okay, let's turn our uh, attention a little further afield to Iran. Are we dealing, uh, in the view of the government, with a suicidal regime? Iran has never posed itself as a suicidal regime. I think that that term is a little extreme, even for Iran. A number of academics and people who've spent their entire life studying Iran think that there's a good chance that the president of Iran, Ahmadinejad, really believes that uh, in order to bring about uh, a, a sort of messianic, apocalyptic situation, you have to sacrifice a good portion of your nation. The government of Israel, the prime minister, have expressed, not over the last year, over the last decade, our fears, our apprehension over what's developing in Iran. Have we forgotten the lessons of the past? Israel has not forgotten. And this is on a moral ground. And this is something where, yes, we are at the forefront and we are talking and calling for the world to act differently. When you have a sovereign country that calls for the annihilation of another country, and you have that same country stating clearly that they want nuclear weapons, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to put two and two together. On the more immediate uh, regional level, um, Iran seems to be pushing as hard as it can for the Lebanese government to fall. I will say that Israel is following day to day, hour to hour, to the, what is happening on the domestic Lebanese front. But I want to also add an additional aspect, that what Hezbollah is doing now with Iran behind in Lebanon has everything to do with their weakness in the aftermath of the fighting this summer. If there is a drastic change in the Lebanese government, that would obviously contribute dramatically to the instability of the Middle East.